92% of DNA damage, the research is showing, is caused by a mineral deficiency. How could we be mineral deficient? Well, there's a few reasons. I always like to look at the why. Why are these things so? Newton's third law of motion states to every action there's an equal and an opposite reaction. There is always a cause, there is always a reason. So why are people mineral deficient? Well, we've got to look at what they eat. And in his book, The Calcium Line, Dr. Robert Thompson, he shows that 80 years ago, the soil had about 80% more nourishment in it than today. So if the soil's deficient, the plant's deficient, and the human that eats that plant is deficient. Now sometimes it can seem discouraging because yes, there's organics. If they say certified organics, you can believe it because the regulations around certified organics are strict. If only they are a little bit stricter on conventional farm farming. So please, you can believe it because a farmer does a lot of work to get that certified organic stamp. What about the neighbour who's not growing organic? Do you know, you, you cannot be fully, uh, you know, fully guaranteed, but you're doing the best you can. And you can start to grow a little bit yourself. But if you're in an apartment, you can have some few pots. <laughs> but in, in America, you've got Trader Joe's, you've also got um, Sprouts, Whole Foods. We don't have that in Australia. We have little health food shops. In Australia, if you want to buy organic, you almost have to go to the big towns and go to the markets. There are places where you can. And I hear in some towns now, big towns, you can Google and, and organic food can be delivered to you. So they're certainly getting better at it. And the more people that buy organic, the more organic will be available. But there's not only uh, that the food's deficient, some people aren't even eating fresh fruit and vegetables. And that's where you get most of your polysaccharides, your minerals. So it's important to eat fresh fruit and vegetables every day. If you introduce children as their first food to fresh fruit and vegetables, they will get a taste for it. If the first food that's introduced to children is pizza and bread and pasta, yes, they'll get a taste for that. <laughs> I have observed with my Girlfriends, when I had babies, my grandchildren and my daughters and sons are seeing it too, that parents dictate the tastes of their children. One lady contacted me and she said, my two-year-old will only eat oat porridge. I said, it's really easy. You don't serve <laughs> it every meal. Yes, you can serve it for breakfast, but not for lunch. But the child wants it. Who's in charge? <laughs> the mother knows that that little one needs minerals. She needs a little bit more than that. And if mother and father are united and have the same message and are consistent, uh, the, the child's got to get it. <laughs> and you'd be surprised what children eat when they're hungry. Go on a picnic way out in the bush and oops, we forgot the food. <laughs> and when you come back, the only food on the table is the food you want them to eat. And you just smile very nicely. It's very easy to change a two-year-old. A little bit harder to change the 15-year-old. <laughs> but you still can. But something else has come in, and that is, that's, that's bring to our second one, which is stimulants. We're such a fast society today. People are wanting quick things, quick fixes, quick food. And there are some stimulants that are leaching the minerals out of the body. One is sugar, the pure crystallized acid that's extracted from the sugarcane plant. It's toxic. There are several books about it. I think there was a few movie through years ago, there was a movie, the sugar movie. Some people might have seen that. But uh, William Dufty, he wrote a book called Sugar Blues. You read that book, you will not touch sugar again. <laughs> 